So what I want to show you is going this way, this is the most protective of the agent. As an agent, my best protection is to get the exclusive right to sell because I'm considered the procuring cause just by getting them to sign it. I get paid no matter what. As you go down that list, it is less protective of me. So those are the three listings and those are the three methods by which we create that agency between myself, the agent, and the client. All right, so that is the employment contract that we deal with. Now, what I want you guys to do in your book is switch over to page 175, please. Because while we're here, I also want to talk about this side over here. This side. There are three of them just like there are three on the listing side, only your book tends to forget to mention them. But guess what? Your test doesn't. So I want to make sure I, you guys understand these. Now, remember, the person who works with the buyer is called the what? They are called the selling agent. So that's why it says the selling side, because we have the listing side and the selling side. All right? Now, there are three agency agreements or employment contracts that you can work with if you are working with a buyer. The ex first one's called the exclusive buyer agency. All right, the exclusive buyer agency. Just like the other, notice there's a parallel here. These three go, to, these go together. So as the exclusive buyer's agency, I get paid no matter what. I am the procuring cause. I convinced this buyer that he's going to buy today and use me to do it. Okay. I could be in Florida golfing with the listing agent we just talked about, and my assistant calls me and goes, hey, our client just wrote an offer. Okay, I get paid no matter what. It is the most protective. Now, I will tell you, this is where you guys are going to get burned in the practice world because there are a lot of people that do not want their buyer to sign a contract. Not, let me misspoke, it's not that they don't want them to, they just fail to ask them. Here's the problem. You get somebody that's been working with you for 23 million weeks in a row, and the one day they call and go, hey Raymond, we want you to show us a house. And I'm like, well, the Colts football game's on today. I'd really not want to go out. The guy goes, okay, no big deal. I don't watch sports. But then he calls another agent and goes, hey, man, my agent's sick today. Can you show me the house? And that other agent shows the house and writes the offer. Guess who the procuring cause is? The other agent. I get nothing. So what you should do is get them under this contract. Most buyers always, always push back. Oh, I don't want to sign a contract with you. Dude, this is how I get paid. And I literally ask people, I've said, you want me to get paid? Every client in the world, not one has ever said, well, no, I don't want you to get paid. Then you need to, okay, this is how I get paid. This contract does not say you are going to buy a house. That is the misconception. What this contract says, if you buy a house, I get paid. 
So literally, I ask them, you want me to get paid? They're all like, yeah, I want you to get paid. Then I need you to sign this contract so that I become the procuring cause. And when and if we buy, I get paid. Thumbs up? All right. Now, we can move on down that list. And here's one that seems to be confusing. It's called the exclusive agency buyer's agency all right notice on this one over here that's exclusive let me do this on this exclusive agency over here we could have said exclusive agency listing agency but we didn't we just literally called it the exclusive agency so now, if we want to talk about the buyer side, we call it exclusive agency, buyer agency. This just allows us and you and I, when we're talking, to be able to differentiate between which side we're talking about. If I said exclusive agency, that's the listing side. If I wanted to talk about the buyer side of it, I would say exclusive agency, buyer agency, all right? Thumbs up if you get what I'm talking about. It's the same concept, just on the other side, and we do it that way on purpose. Now, just like over here, I get paid no matter what, except it flip-flops because we're on the buyer side, except if the buyer finds the seller then I don't get paid. All right. So that scenario we talked about earlier where the guy's on the driveway and the jogger runs by, if the jogger was your client under exclusive agency, buyer agency, that buyer found the house without you. You would not get paid. Right? Thumbs up you would not get paid. So this is probably the one that we never use. Doesn't get used, okay? Because here's what happens. If you get them to sign the exclusive buyer's agency, they work under the exclusive. If they fail to sign anything, they end up working under this third one, which is called open, just like on the listing side. Now, here's the problem with open. Open allows the buyer, just like the seller, to enter into as many contracts as they want to, which includes implied agency and remember i told you earlier that implied agency is bad but it's still an agency so if a buyer comes to me and says raymond i want you to help me and i fail to get them to sign the exclusive buyer agency they end up working under open and then i'm like oh it's sunday i don't want to show you a house because of the culture on, and they go, <clears throat> okay, so they call another agent, that other agent shows it to them, they get procuring cause, not me, because I didn't get them to sign exclusive. This is where you will get burned, and trust me, it's happened to me dozens of times. What ends up happening is, Oh, I've got a buyer that's my sister's neighbor's aunt's cousin. I trust her. And then they end up doing something because they don't understand how you get paid, like calling another broker while you're on vacation or calling a broker that day you want to watch the Colts. And all of a sudden, that person that you trusted so you didn't get them to sign a contract now writes an offer with another agent and you get nothing all right any questions on this 
I feel like this system reduces your comments or questions. Is that true? Okay. I just want to make sure you guys understand. You still ask if you still got the questions because this is a pretty important concept to understand. Once again, just like the other more protective as you go up. Now, open is rather common in some areas. In the commercial real estate area, open is very common. In the investment world, it is also very common because there are many agents a specialty. So for instance, in the commercial world, I may tell one agent or one of my agents, hey dude, go find me a 30 unit apartment complex because I know George deals with apartments. But I also may tell another guy, you know what, go find me 20 acres of land. I'll build my own apartments if you find me. And I know this guy deals with land. So I have two agents working for me, one in the form of an apartment guy and a land guy. If the land guy brings me some land, the apartment guy gets nothing, that, which is what open agency says. If the apartment guy brings me a bunch of apartments, he'll get paid, the land guy gets nothing. So it's very common in the investment and commercial world to work that open, because of the difference in special specialties of brokers, all right?